and welcome to uh, a skeleton screaming into Unreal. Uh, this is um, will be a short introduction into how to get data into Unreal uh, in real time from uh, from a quality system. Um, and uh, the people presenting is uh, so it's me. My name is Martin Holmberg. I, I work with the entertainment. Um, the business area of um, at Qualysys and then we have on chat and uh, kind of answering your questions that you write. Uh, you have Morgan Larsson who's our uh, software lead and then we also have uh, let's see here if the webcam is on can you wave Patrick so over there we have Patrick who's uh, put on a suit and uh, will be our live skeleton before we begin, we a little bit about the, the webinar control panel. Uh, so you have a control panel and there is a small arrow to show and hide it. Uh, so when you start, it might be collapsed. Uh, you have a, a full screen, uh, which is kind of handy, and you should have a view and enter questions. So um, if someone uh, tries to write a question, we'll see if uh, Morgan can answer it. Uh, and if you can't hear, then there is a sound check uh, part here. Cool, cool. Uh, so the agenda for today, uh, we're going to install or import or add the QTM Connect plugin uh, that we download from GitHub. Uh, we are going to explore a bit the concepts of streaming data from uh, QTM to Unreal. Uh, and then we're going to look onto skeleton streaming and uh, remapping that to an Unreal character. Uh, we aren't going to do any un analog data that was from last presentation, uh, but we are going to do uh, six of streaming and uh, a bit of virtual camera. So let's head out there. Uh, QTM Connect for Unreal. Uh, it's available on GitHub. So to get there, you go to, uh, uh, I usually just uh, Google Qualysys and GitHub and then skip the ad and just go straight to, to the GitHub pa page. Uh, here we have all our repositories. Uh, you have a, our Connect for Unity, you have our Python, you have our C Sharp SDK, the Path Resources, C++ SDK. But for now, we're going to have a look at the QTM Connect for Unreal. And this is um, packaged a little bit different than other um, things that we have and that's because it's there's so many versions of Unreal and um, they're set up a bit we have to change the code for each version that we release so we are using branches for this so there aren't any release page uh, for you those of you who have attended my Un uh, Unity uh, webinar you remember that you went to releases and I just picked the latest release basically. Here you have to select the branch. So you select the branch of the version that you're uh, using. You can also go with the, the hard links inside here. But you select the branch and then you just do, you, you, you can, can download just, just that folder, but I just usually just press clone and then just uh, download the zip file of that. And there we go, as you can see, it's downloading. It will take a minute or two. Um, and then we show in Finder. Uh, we are getting a compressed file here. Um, as you can see, I've prepared this a bit, so I already have it uh, downloaded here. Just to extract the folder. <laughs> Replace everything. Yeah, perfect done this before um, and uh, here we go so what's important here is inside of the the folder you downloaded you have what is called pre-built and this is where the DLLs are located so we build a version for each specific uh, Unreal version and it's also important to know that if you build Unreal 
by yourself. I mean, that's not uncommon to actually build it straight from source and then you can have weird version numbers and so on. And then our pre-builds won't work. Then you have to build the, the plugin also at the same time, uh, which you can do straight from these sources. So it's, it's not, uh, if you build Unreal, then you can build our plugin. Here you have a qualities folder. This one we want to put in program files and we want to put it in Epic Games and then in the engine version that you want to use. And then in engine, you have a plugins folder. So it's program files or wherever you have installed your Unreal uh, program directory. But normally it ends up in program files. Uh, Epic Game. Uh, version of the Unreal Engine and then Engine plugins. And here you should just drag it over, uh, copy it to plugins. It will say replace because I did this 10 minutes ago. Uh, and there we go, now it's installed. So uh, that's how you install it. Uh, you need to install a plugin for each version. So if you, like me, are running 23, 24, and 25 in parallel uh, because different uh, different other plugins have different compatibilities. For example, when I use a face tracker, they haven't released it for 25, so then I have to go back to 24 and work and so on. So then you have to install it for all the versions. So um, Epic Game Launcher, uh, where you have your library of everything you have installed and all the projects and everything you're working on. Uh, you have your versions. Uh, now we're going to create a new project. So I'm just going to uh, go from just launching the engine. Um, we're going to use 25. Uh, there's lots of cool new stuff in 25, so it's worth updating if you can. Uh, for this template, uh, so I'm going to create a completely new uh, project from scratch, um, showing you how to do all the steps. Uh, there won't be any fancy graphics and so on, uh, because that takes more time. So uh, I'm going to go on the film and television um, things. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice, this blank template is actually kind of a nice, uh, clean uh, starting point. Uh, webinar 2020-06-25, we'll call this project, and uh, no ray tracing, because that's not supported by anything, more or less. So, and as you can see, we have a new plugin uh, available. And if we look here, we have two new Qualysys plugins that we just installed. Uh, we have QTM Connect for Unreal. Uh, this is our old plugin, uh, so to say. This is the plugin that we released before uh, LiveLink was a thing, so before um, 4.20. And it uh, it's an engine plugin, so it will uh, only work in play mode. It's made to run in games. Uh, it's not especially compatible with LiveLink. Uh, the way stuff connects are a bit different. So uh, nowadays, if you're using LiveLink, don't use the QTM Connect for Unreal. Uh, you should not use those um, in in parallel. Uh, it will be a bit messy. Uh, I, I, I can't see that we have gotten any questions. I just want to check that that questions are working. Uh, and I don't think you can see the chat because I think Helen actually uh, removed the chat. So it might be that we only have uh, questions. But yeah, the question seems to work. Thank you very much for that. So I will enable uh, Qualysys Connect for LiveLink. Uh, if you're using LiveLink, don't use the QTM Connect for Unreal. Um, that's my advice. So 
And when you enable a plugin, you have to restart the engine. Um, note on restarting engine, um, Unreal is notorious about crashing, uh, especially when you use Blueprints and Live Link. Uh, so save often because Unreal doesn't save anything. Basically, you can create like an asset and you think you have that asset and it crashes and um, asset is gone. Uh, so um, save a lot. I will probably demonstrate how it looks when, you, when stuff crashes. Uh, it usually happens. So um, now we have our blank scene. Uh, if we jump to the live link window and uh, just to show you uh, windows and uh, then you show live link window. This is the kind of connection hub for, uh, for all live link sources. And here you now can find our QTM connect for live link. Um, in here, um, I have to say that we are working on a new live link plugin. Uh, we tried to have it ready for this, but <laughs> there was a few bugs. And uh, so it will have an auto discovery and a little bit of new cool stuff in this. But here you just write the IP number of uh, the computer that you're going to connect to. Uh, it defaults to localhost, but I, I have QTM on another computer uh, here. So we are connecting to that. And when we connect, you can see that we have um, our live link connection up and running. Um, there's a few settings here. Um, when you start working with multiple live link sources and uh, syncing time and so on, this becomes important. But here you can, for example, evaluate the live link frames based on engine time or latest frame. So engine time is basically when uh, the engine received the frame um, and it tries to sync that with all other frames. Uh, time code is if you have a center box uh, or a center time code or similar time code uh, connected to your camera system, then you can choose that one. And you have to have that on all your devices and then everything will be magically synced. And then you have a bit of buffer settings and so on. Uh, you can see the clock offset here that it considers the latency of our system. And it looks to be somewhere around 3.5 to 4 uh, milliseconds, which is about what we have in our system. So that's nice. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see all the subjects we have here. So PAM is our... Uh, skeletal um, subject. Uh, if we have a look at the, the frame data, we can see that we have 22 array elements with, uh, with locations. Uh, you can also see the static data where you can have all, your, all the bone names that we have and uh, which bone parents, which, which parent is the bone of each bone and so on. For a simple prop, let's say a cam, for example, you can see that you only have one uh, one translation uh, or one transform sent for that. And here is the transform for the cam, for example, that I have behind me here. And uh, we also have a paddle in this one. So. That's our live link sources, and this is how it's also a very good way to see that you actually get data. Apart from the green ones are active subjects, yellow ones are uh, subjects that are in QTM but don't have any data. So it's uh, a prop that isn't in the you know, scene or something like that. Cool, cool, cool. So what do we want to do with this? Um, the next step is, of course, see if we can place uh, Patrick on a on a character here. So I'm just going to jump over here and uh, I actually have uh, an asset downloaded from uh, render people. I do recommend this uh, this one, uh, maybe not in French, but in English. Uh, <laughs> I don't speak French. Uh, so this is, they have some free assets and also assets that you can buy. Uh, they come fully rigged for Maya or for uh, uh, Unreal or Unity or yeah, all of it. 
I like it when I want an asset that doesn't look like some fantasy character or um, similar that is the normal content that you would find online. And I just grab this one. Uh, I open my, uh, so this is my project catalog, my webinar, this is the, the one I'm working on. Open the content in this one. And then I just grab uh, this kind of collection folder and copy it over. I found it easier to just copy the files over and then it's automatically imported than to actually import it into Unreal. Uh, it has a tendency to go wrong when I use the import function for many things. But now you see I have it in my content browser. Uh, I will uh, go here. Here is my rigged character. First off, I need to assign a skeleton. This is very particular for this model and uh, this this kind of thing. But now I just assigned it. It comes with an Unreal uh, mannequin uh, skeleton. So now we have Manuel here. He's a Hispanic guy with jeans and a t-shirt. Basically, it looks perfect in my scene. Uh, and how do we get uh, quality state into this? First off, uh, we have to create a retarget asset so that we have something to, to use for our retargeting. So we're going to create and we're going to create a blueprint. And if you search here in uh, all classes and just search for qualysis, we have a qualysis live link retarget asset. And so just create a new blueprint based on the Qualysys Live Link retargeter. And there we have it. And we call it uh, Qualysys Retarget Blueprint. That's perfect. And you can see the little star here. So we have created this one. Uh, it's in our asset. It is not saved. So if I crash now, this one won't exist. So use the save all button um, to get rid of the star there. And now when it crashes, it, you will have it later. Um, the next thing is we need to configure this uh, retargeting asset. So if we open this up, what you can see here, this is a data only blueprint. So uh, it's not configured for data only. So it has a view also. This has a list. So uh, this is a bone mapping. Um, thing. And this is because um, our skeleton, our black box skeleton that comes out of QTM, it has the, the bone hierarchy names are, are what you see on the left here. And what you have in Unreal is either the, the Unreal mannequin uh, bone hierarchy, which we're going to see, or you can have a completely custom um, hierarchy. Uh, worth noting is that this this will be remade uh, quite soon, actually. Uh, so we are working on a, a remake of this so we can have generic names on these ones. So uh, open up our, our guide that we have here, the one that we're going to retarget to. Click on Skeleton. And that one always moves the window. So here we have the skeletal hierarchy of the, um, the person or, or the thing that we we want to see. And I think that we can easily, ah, never mind. Uh, we can have a look at the skeleton here. But what's important here is that you have to watch me write a few names here. So um, we call it hips, uh, and we call it pelvis, uh, spine. Uh, we call spine spine, but uh, they do spine zero one and spine zero two and spine zero three. As you can see in the list here, one, two, three. And uh, then we go to left shoulder, uh, which is called uh, clavicle uh, and left left arm, uh, upper arm, left, I think. Uh, we have a lower arm, left, and we have a hand, left. And to
to not have to write so much. We just copy paste a bit here. Uh, is everyone following along? Any questions on this? Uh, I do know that it might look like a bit of magic or, but you will, you will see. Uh, so Nick is called, if I'm not wrong, uh, where did that go and go? Uh, Nick zero one, if you have multiple Nicks. Uh, head is called head, that one is easy at least. Uh, then we have left up leg, uh, which they call tie, uh, so tie left. Uh, and then we have calf left. Sometimes I just wonder if they use these names to make me misspell. So we have foot left, if I'm not wrong foot left and then we have ball ball left upside is that you only do this once uh, per project though uh, these ways of uh, of transferring these between projects uh, so you can migrate them So, so as you can see now, we have created a translation uh, matrix or a map from hips to pelvis and the retarget uh, function or, or this, this blueprint also handles all the, all the rotations. And before we do anything, we save. Uh, and then we can compile it and then we're done. So uh, now we have a retarget asset. Now we need a blueprint. So if you can see here, it uh, if we click this guy here uh, we see the details for him you can see that we need an animation class to to move him around so we go to animation and we create an animation blueprint and we have to select the skeleton that we use for our animation blueprint and in this case it's the ue4 mannequin skeleton and we call this qualysis Live link animation blueprint. There we go. So we have a Qualysis live link animation blueprint. Uh, we open it up. And what we have is a, is a traditional animation blueprint. Um, it's you, you, you input a lot of poses here and uh, then you can uh, merge between or you can shift between poses. That's how normal animation inside of Unreal works. Uh, what we want to do is we want to grab a live link. So we're going to have a live link pose. Uh, we just add that node to it. Uh, we select here we can write a subject name but if you have live link running you can just select the subject that you want to do and then you connect it here and then you press compile. Uh, press save first. Oh there is an option here um always save on compile it's a good thing to set so uh, if we compile this you can see we have data running but it looks really really bad and that's because of the retarget assets so if we look to the right here you can see that we are using uh, the live link remap the normal live link remap function uh, what that does is it just takes the bone names and pushes it forward basically um, you can go in and edit this one for for other animations and so on but now we have created a qualysis retargeting blueprint so we select that one instead and we compile and if project moves around a bit you can see in the preview window here on the left that we have a guy walking around um, so we close him up and now um, all we have to do is choose our qualysis live link animation blueprint and uh, now it's a good idea to press save all uh, before we press play. And then we press play. And if we zoom out, we now have an animation. And this will work on all the assets that you can download in Asset Store or uh, Marketplace in, <laughs> in Unreal. Um, and uh, because it, that's the normal skeleton that it will be uh, configured with 
if you have custom skeletons, uh, please contact us. Uh, we do have new functionality to solve onto custom skeleton and then stream onto custom skeletons. But there we go. Any questions on uh, how to uh, stream onto skeleton? Oh, Morgan has answered them all. Perfect. Uh, please highlight if it's anything that I need to. Uh, uh. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we have a paddle. Uh, so I don't know if you see my video view. Let's bring it up here. So. Uh, I'm sharing video view in video view, but uh, we have a paddle board here that I put markers on. And uh, the idea now is just to put the basic prop on this uh, so you can see how that is done. So let's start off doing that. Uh, and you could in theory just grab any prop, any kind of um, mesh, that, uh, that you have uh, and, uh, and drop it into here and then add a blueprint to that. I prefer to contain it within an actor. So I'm going to drop an actor into it. Actors are like the basic building block inside of Unreal. Uh, most everything inherits the, from the, the actor blueprint. Uh, let's put the floor to zero also. So, um, So here we go. Um, so now we have an actor here. Uh, on this actor, I'm going to add a blueprint. So I'm adding a blueprint of the type, uh, so just copying the, the actor blueprint, basically. Uh, so here we have a new 3D world, and this is inside of, contained within this actor. So in this one, I'm going to add, and I'm going to add a cylinder. Uh, if I would have had a nice uh, mesh of a uh, of a paddleboard, I could have added that inside of here. Uh, I do have that, but it didn't look good. So uh, we are going with this one, and I'm going to do it so that I have this kind of cylinder. And the thing is now uh, that I can move this this around, so I I can basically move the pivot point. You, those of you who uh, <laughs> worked with 3D artists knows that they will most often place the pivot point at some completely illogical place where you really don't want it. So um, you want to be able to move kind of the, the pivot point of it. So now I have moved this one up. If I compile and save this one uh, and we go back here, you can see that, that I now have my my cylinder, I have it standing here in the middle, and the pivot point of this this cylinder in in the three D world uh, is down here where the actor's pivot point is. So that's how I can move uh, where where the pivot point of the the mesh is in relationship to where I'm where I have it on my real uh, object, for example. So um, next off, we need to add some live link magic source to this blueprint. So we uh, open up the blueprint editor and uh, in the event graph, uh, we need to add a component live link. So I have still not understood what the difference between a live link controller and a live link skeleton animation is. I think that the controller will be deprecated in the next version. Uh, I think they kind of made a change here. And new in uh, Unreal 25 is that you, you have to do an evaluation of a live link frame. So we start off by doing that. So we evaluate our live link frame and that's how you get kind of, you select your subjects and so on. Uh, we select a paddle. Uh, very 